Welcome or welcome back to the channel. For the past 13 weeks I've been chelating using the Andy Cutler chelation protocol to resolve my mercury issues. If you want to see how I got where I am, check out this video. I completed my 13th round of chelation this week. I'm taking 3 milligrams of DMSA and ALA per dose, with doses every 3 hours or 4 hours during the night, and I'm taking my version of the CAR4 both on and off round. I switched up my supplement routine a little this week, which provides a good opportunity for discussing it in more detail. The CAR4 are the four CAR supplements that the Andy Cutler Chelation Protocol recommends that you take to prepare for and endure through chelation. This includes vitamin C and E, magnesium and zinc. I react badly to both vitamin C and magnesium, so I don't take them as the protocol recommends. Taking high doses of vitamin C makes me pee crystals more often than normal, which isn't comfortable. I think this is an oxalate issue as the body converts vitamin C into oxalate. My DMSA contains vitamin C, so I don't take any extra, just what's in the pills. I also feel pretty bad when I take magnesium. The two main ways that I'm aware of to take magnesium are as citrate salts or in the sulfate form with Epsom salts. Both make me feel bad so I don't take it too often. Again I think this might be an oxalate issue particularly with Epsom salts. Science tells us that sulfate and oxalate are linked such that when more sulfate comes into the cells more oxalate is released from them. An oxalate in the bloodstream is pretty harsh on the body. Since I feel bad when I take magnesium, I tend not to do it too often. When I do, it's usually as an Epsom salt bath because it gives me a reason to rest for a while. I take vitamin E every day, both on and off round. I believe the protocol recommends taking 1,000 international units per day. I was taking a couple of 400 IU pills per day when I started chelating, but now I just take one. And I didn't notice much difference in my symptoms when I made the change. Last up is zinc. Up to now I've been taking a pill per day both on and off round, but I'll just take it off round now. Powell suggested this as mercury could compete for the binding sites in the chelators that I'm taking. Thanks for the recommendation. At the very least, making this change will mean I don't need to buy as many zinc pills. As well as taking my version of the CAR4, I take vitamins B6 and B12 and biotin once or twice a week. Very occasionally I take magnesium, potassium and calcium citrate and iodine. It's been a long time since I took any of those. I tend to feel worse when I do, which I attribute as healing symptoms, but I do need to take it easy on myself. I'd like to add selenium to my routine, and I intend to, but I haven't actually been to the centre of town to pick some up since Powell suggested it. This week has been a little better than last week, which I'm thankful for, but it still hasn't been easy. Most of my symptoms have been similar to those in past weeks, so I don't have much to say in that regard. But my wife and I had an alarming experience last weekend that I'd like to share. Last Sunday morning, my chelator alarm woke me and I put two pills in my mouth and then promptly fell back to sleep. I woke up 10 minutes or so later and one of the pills had started dissolving in my mouth. I could feel the free powder floating around. I drank some water to swallow the pills and powder and then went back to sleep. Later that night, my wife drank from the same bottle of water and she immediately felt bad. She felt woozy, got a headache, had a horrible taste in her mouth and needed to spit in the sink. My wife has had amalgam fillings for years and she still has them in. The only thing that I can imagine is when I drank the water earlier that day, some of the chelator ended up in the water and my wife drank in and inadvertently redistributed some mercury from her fillings. This experience just goes to show how poisonous mercury is, and how mercury poison and chelation are both things that we ought to take really seriously. I asked my wife if she's interested in having her amalgam fillings removed, but she doesn't want to risk the detox symptoms at the moment. I don't blame her after all of the symptoms that she's seen me go through. For the past couple of weeks I've been working really hard on a video for my other YouTube channel. It's now ready and I posted it today. I learned a lot while working on that video and I'll try to bring that here to improve the quality of my videos on this channel. Let me know if you ever have any suggestions or if there's anything you'd like me to discuss. As always, if you think you're mercury poisoned, I hope this video helps you convince yourself that you're not crazy, you're not alone and you can heal. Until next time, all the best on your healing journey.